Hey, I'm Johnny. I'm in my kitchen at home, and I want to talk to you about this jalapeno pepper. What makes a jalapeno spicy, like every other chili pepper, is a chemical called capsaicin. Capsaicin causes us to feel heat, that spice, a little bit of pain when we eat it. And when we consume a chili pepper, our brain actually releases endorphins so that we can experience a little pleasure to combat what the brain, what our bodies are interpreting as pain happening to us. The body is reacting to the pain that it's experiencing. That's why you might feel a buzz sometimes, a little bit high even after you eat spicy food. Another way that you can make the spicy food seem more mild is by introducing sugar. Now, sugar is another uh, ingredient, not unlike endorphins, that lets our body experience pleasure. So to mask suffering, our body introduces pleasure. And if you introduce pleasure, as in sugar, into your spicy food, it'll actually make the food taste a little bit more balanced. That's why a chili sauce like sriracha, which is popular among many people, has a tamer bite because it has a lot of sugar, in fact, added to it. And I, I want to talk about this idea because I think when we experience pain, we like to cover it up with pleasurable feelings. And I think that's okay. The body does it. We do it naturally even when we cook. So learning to cope with pain and deal with it is an important part of our lives. A good way to cope with pain then is to practice experiencing it. There are some people who can eat a lot of spicy food because they're used to eating it. Now, I don't uh, suggest that you actually incur pain, but I think we can use this season of Lent that we're in, the one where we're walking towards death, walking towards Jesus' death, as a way to relearn how to suffer. And so one thing we do during Lent is that is we often fast. We take something away from our regular life that causes us to be a little bit more sensitive to the suffering inside of us, and maybe even the suffering of the world. And when we do that, we learn, we practice how to suffer, how to experience pain. We grow more in touch with who we are, we grow more in touch with the pain around the world too. And so that's the message I wanna offer you this Lent. Try to remove something that makes you feel your own personal pain and the pain of the world around you more readily. And I hope it's something that you can reintroduce once we, uh, re once we celebrate resurrection with, uh, with Jesus so that you can experience that pleasure again and that hope again. But for this season, for the remaining three weeks of Lent, try to remove something from your day-to-day uh, -day life that causes you to experience pain a little bit more. It might be something as easy as uh, eating a chili pepper without any sugar and see if you can't get in touch more with your insides and the suffering around you and learn a little bit more about how to suffer. The reason to do this, and I'll leave you with this, the reason to do this is because suffering is an inevitable part of our life. I wish it weren't. I wish you didn't experience any. I wish you just signing up for Circle of Hope caused you not to feel any suffering. But the fact is you will. And I hope that through this practice, you can learn how to do it how to cope with it in healthy ways, how to experience it in healthy ways that don't debilitate you, so that you can move through your life following Jesus, ready to bear the suffering that Christians are often bearing because of their increased uh, sensitivity toward the suffering within them and the suffering in the world, so that they can then minister and pave the way for others to find hope in Jesus because they are that much more intimate with what it means to feel pain and feel suffering. So I hope this Lenten journey for you is nourishing and, and deepening as you get in touch with your sorrow, as you grieve, as you, as you move with the Spirit, as you move with Jesus into his own suffering, into his own death, and onto resurrection.